Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Porku in the in the five minute pool on ICC. Uh, Porku is from Brazil, and let's see, he's playing a uh, hyper accelerated dragon. I'll just play knight c3. I won't play c4. White does have the option of c4 taking play into Meroxi territory. Now here's the thing in this line: you don't want to play f3 too soon because knight g4 is not yet a threat. And here you want to go bishop b3 in view of knight takes e4. Uh, which is like a center fork type trick after knight takes e4, d5. I'll explain that in the analysis. Uh, e6 is very weird. I guess going for d5? Hmm. Never seen that move before, so I'm not going to overanalyze it. I mean, d5 is a little bit of a frame move, but he ends up with a isolated queen spawn out of this. Now, maybe like knight g4 could be a bother in the future, but um, well, yeah, I guess let's just play h3 and cover that square. Long run, I hope to exploit the weakness of this pawn. Don't have too many short-term plans, I suppose. Um, maybe queen d3 is all right. You can play knight e5. I could take on e6. He'll take with the pawn, most likely. Let's play queen d3. Yeah, knight e5, maybe just queen e2 thereafter. Looks like a pretty reasonable position for white. I'm just going to check Porku's stats for a moment. Peak 5 minute rating of 2250. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. The way I approach the opening the vast majority of the time is I kind of look of it at like it uh, as if you win out of the opening, that's great, but um, that's not your goal. Your goal is just to get to a playable position for the middle game. And I think if you approach it that way, um, that's like a healthy mindset because it doesn't um, encourage you to focus too much on openings in your study. Because openings are important, but they're not the most important thing. And if you're an improving player, you really shouldn't spend much time on openings. You should have a few main defenses, um, a few main options that you can play against e4, d4, and one main move as white, uh, and, and go with that. So the a6 pawn is hanging here. I can just take it. I mean, he has d c5 maybe. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe that is annoying. Can I take on d5 then and play c4? Not sure if that works tactically. I'm going to take it and ask questions later. I mean, on c5, like bishop g5 is a good looking move. Maybe bishop a4. Just seems like I'll have something good in reply. Yeah, he just plays queen c7, kind of admitting that he's down a pawn. Queen b6 is possible. Yeah, let's see if we can get him to trade queens. I'll pre-move this. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, so sorry if... Uh, I'm not as sharp as I usually am. <laughs> Queen e5. Well, there's no threat associated with that move. Let's just play a4. Get going with our initiative. I gotta watch my king side a little bit. Okay, against that move, I was thinking bishop to d4. Maybe taking is better. Yeah, let's take instead. I can still go bishop d4 if I want. Yeah, takes with the queen. So if I play bishop d4, he takes with his bishop. Um, then if queen takes, he can trade queens and then play c5. And then try to cramp me with c4. Don't especially like the look of that. What about bishop h6, though? Bishop h6 might accomplish the same thing, but it avoids that line. Yeah, that seems to be a better move. We'll do bishop h6 and look to trade the dark square bishops. Leave him with this light square bishop, which is kind of bad because he has several pawns on light squares. Has nearly all his pieces on light squares, save for this bishop. Okay, so he might be eyeing this pawn down here, but... We can take, and then, again, this, this queen trade is very tempting. The only thing that's stopping me is after the trade, he has c5. 
So I think C5 is for sure on the cards for him soon. Uh, Rook D4 makes sense. I'll play Queen C5, though. I like this move as a way to prevent C5. If he takes on H3 now, I have Queen C3 check, and I can take on H3 with my Queen, so he doesn't even get to uh, get two pawns for it. I'm going to see if I can get him to um, blunder Bishop takes H3. Because if he does do it, then Queen C3 check. Yeah, he check. blundered right into it. Nice little, nice little trick. So classic like intermezzo. Yeah, he just didn't look far enough. He does get to take a five now, but he's clearly losing. If queen takes a five, I'll swap rooks on e eight. I could take on d four thereafter, but actually I can't. Queen check, king h two, queen e five. But I could play like, you know, queen takes a5, rook takes e8, rook takes e8, queen d7, for instance, hitting the rook and hitting d4. So he just resigned. Okay, let's take a look at this. Because I know in games of my students, when they faced the hyper-accelerated dragon, which is g6 right away, or the accelerated dragon, which is knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and then g6, um, sometimes white messes up the move order in these lines. So it is important to understand what the move order is all about. So g6 and then d4 take. One extra option that white has is queen takes d4 because black has not put the knight on c6 yet. So queen takes d4 is possible hitting the rook. After knight f6, e5, knight c6, I believe queen a4 is the main move. And then knight d5, queen e4. I haven't checked this line for the longest time. I never played this line for either side, but uh, this is like one of the theoretical battlegrounds. Um, I don't know, maybe white has like a small edge. Wouldn't surprise me if uh, theory said that. But I've always taken with the knight on d4, and then bishop g7. And again, white has another option of playing c4 and taking the game into Roxy bind territory. Um, I think those positions are a little bit played out. They kind of lead to like middle games with a pretty static pawn structure and plans that have been very well worked out for both sides. So knight c3, at least in my opinion, is a little bit more exciting. So knight c6, bishop e3, and then knight f6. Okay, so contrary to a normal dragon, where black's pawn is already on d6, um, here knight g4 would not be protected by a bishop sitting on c8. So white should not play f3. This is an unnecessary move right now. Uh, in fact, if you go f3, you often are asking for punishment if black wants to play an early d5. Because your bishop has not hit c4 yet, so you insufficiently defend the d5 square. Black has two attackers on it, and white only has two defenders. And the opening of the position this early could favor black with that fianchetto bishop bearing down on both knights. So that's why it's imperative, and if you play dragons or accelerated dragons or hyper-accelerated dragons, um, that from the white side you understand that you don't have to play f3 yet. So I think that's the biggest move order mistake I see. Uh, so bishop c4 is the main move. Castles. And now bishop b3. So here again, f3 is not necessary. Knight g4 is not a threat. Um, if white castles here, this is a, a well-known um, error. It's not like a blunder or anything, but it's an error in view of knight takes e4, which I found out from the white side against uh, Andrew Karklins, who's about oh, USCF 2400 maybe, or he was at least at the time I played him, uh, a veteran Chicago master when I played him at the Chicago Open in maybe 2002 or so. It's been quite a while. But um, he played knight takes e4, and after knight takes e4, d5, black gets to open the center, and they're going to regain the material. And if bishop takes Check. f7, uh, I think rook takes f7 is the best. Is king takes f7 also possible? I seem to remember something about that. But the gist of it is you should play bishop b3 and uh, drop the bishop back so as to avoid knight takes e4, knight takes e4, d5. Yeah. He played e6, which is pretty strange. a5 is one of the main moves, actually. Trying to play a4, after which one of white's minor pieces will be deflected, and black hopes that the e4 pawn will be insufficiently defended. Um, here white has several options. You can play f3 now. f3 is a bit more acceptable to play now. Um, there's also simply castles, if you're looking for just an easy line to play. And then after a4, knight takes a4, knight takes e4. Knight b5 scores pretty well for white. Threatening bishop b6, queen here, and then knight c7. So this is a pretty reasonable line. So bishop b3. Oh yeah, and there's also the uh, very famous trap that you want to be familiar with. 
Um, <laughs> even if you're not playing this line for either side, it's kind of a nice trap to know. So there's a game um, of Fishers. Can't remember who he was playing. I want to say Rashevsky, but I don't think it was Rashevsky. But um, knight a5, hitting the bishop. This looks like it could be a reasonable move because it does hunt down the light square bishop. But after e5, black's knight is kind of running out of squares. And if knight takes b3, there is e takes f6 in between move. And if knight h5, note that white will trap the knight with g4. So on e5, Fisher's opponent played knight e8. And now white to move and win. Let's see if you can find the win. Okay, the answer is bishop takes Check. f7. This is a really brilliant stroke. And no matter which way black takes it, white will be playing knight e6 on the next move. So the game went king takes e6, knight e6. Um, I don't know if Fisher's opponent continued at this point because <laughs> black is either losing the queen or getting mated soon. Um, obviously the pawn is pinned, so if d takes e6, queen takes d8. And the queen has nowhere to go. Note that b6 and c7 are covered. So king takes e6, queen check. e5, check. King here, g4, check. Check. King takes g4, rook Check. g1, white is going to be mating in short order. For instance, like king h5, queen g2, and black's getting mated. So that's a nice little trap to know. Um, that's another benefit of bishop b3 is that knight a5 like doesn't necessarily win the bishop pair. <laughs> knight a5 is not a good move. So my opponent played e6. I'm a little skeptical of this plan going d5, because like I said, it just it seems like black has taken on an isolated queen pawn, and I mean, yeah, their position should be relatively okay, but it's a static weakness and I don't think they really have anything to show for it. Like they can't point to my position and say that I as black have um, achieved something because white has some sort of weakness in return for the IQP. So I just played h3 to control the g4 square. I thought my moves were pretty logical. I mean, rook a d1, let's just see what the engine eval is right around here. So he played rook c8 and I was able to take on c6 and win that pawn. Yeah, black um, black needs to play actively. Queen a5 makes sense. That reinforces a6. Maybe they can bring the rook to d8 and line up behind that d-pawn. Hard to say exactly how I'd go about winning a position like this because there's so much play left. And we've hardly exchanged anything yet. So rook c8, though, was a clear mistake. Knight takes c6. And um, if rook takes c6, it's probably the better of the move, but... Uh, Better the two moves, but I guess I can take here, can't I? Huh. Yeah, because after here, I have this move c4. It's interesting. Exploiting the fact that uh, the queen on d8 is only defended by the rook, whereas I have my queen and rook bearing down on d8. Hmm. Nice little tactic. And I assume the same thing on bishop takes d5. I can also play c4. Just planning to take and be up a pawn. So he took with the b-pawn instead, but queen takes a6, looks like a nearly clean pawn. I think black's only chances here are really connected with trying to advance the d and c pawns quickly, like get those moving. Because in the game, he didn't quite achieve that. Yeah, here, take. He took with the queen. And if bishop d4, there is bishop takes d4. This is the move I didn't like. Because if rook takes d4, then queen takes e1 check. So I'd have to take with the queen. But after a trade, like here black does get to play c5 and activate this mini pawn mass. This is a, a scenario that uh, I think would have been nice for black to achieve in the game. He didn't get a chance to do it. So that's why I played bishop h6 instead of bishop d4 to rule out that possibility. And I like queen c5. This is a nice multi-purpose move. It stops c5, so black is stuck with this backward pawn. And it also sets up that trap, which he fell headlong into in the game soon. So here, I simply play a5. Yep, and that's check. just losing a piece to queen c3, check. So, but even with, um, you know, perfect play here, I don't think black will be able to hold. He's just down a pawn, and it's a pretty passive position for him, too. Rook e3 is probably a good move. Note king g8, point is to threaten bishop takes h3 when there's no queen c3 check. But rook e3 keeps keeps a handle on the third rank, and white can look forward to pushing this pawn and maybe going about winning the c6 pawn. Lots of possible plans. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this game, and I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.